Hello and welcome to Did You Know Fridays. It is that time again, you guys. What are you going to learn today? I learned a lot getting, getting material for this. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you. I'll let for the people, hey King, King and Eva, Perez and Fabian. Perez is actually my maiden name, did you know that? Hi David, and it's nice to see you, and Gus and Jay Ann, nice to see you guys, AKA, nice to see you Ceci, nice to see you here again. Oh, thank you, hello, oh, yeah, all the people here are, by the way, beautiful. Duckins, they are beautiful in mind and spirit and everything else that you can imagine. So today is the fun day. It is the day that we just um, put the issues aside, okay? Because Monday and Wednesday, we discuss issues. What's going on? How can you fix this? Oh, thank you. And the king needs a queen, so when is her... <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I'd be committing a crime if I married somebody else. Buenos dias, Ceci. And Robin, you made it in. You made it in. Okay. Oh, great. Excellent. Yeah, today I posted and uploaded a new video today, you guys. Red Dragon, check it out on YouTube. If you haven't already, the name, just type my name in. It'll come up. So today, good. I'm so glad, Robin. Oh, hi. Incred meaning. So yeah, my new video is out today. And we're gonna be coming up with videos on Tuesdays called the To-Do List Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, one minute videos uh, to-do list. So that's coming up starting next week, okay? We are married, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, hi Lena, I'm having a coffee with my cousins. They seem to be distant and can't acknowledge my feelings. Okay, so what you wanna do is, I'm gonna try to address that here. Uh, but what today, usually on Fridays, we do Did You Know? And we talk about fascinating facts. On Mondays and Wednesday, we talk about issues that are really bothering you. But we will, I will take time to answer your question, okay, before we get started, because I have plenty of time today. Uh, you can't talk a lot. So your cousins are feeling withdrawn. Was there any time when that happened? Has it always been like that? Has it been recently that something happened? Uh, so tell me, and what is your name? Um, Charizard, it's hard to say that name. But hi Tim and Denomination, uh, it's recently. So what happened? And while you're telling me the story, uh, <laughs> yes, no, well that is not true, but hey, Mal, okay Mal, yeah, because I'm at work. Okay, all right, listen, we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna try to answer, look, if you really have a question that needs an answer, I am here today. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I have a master's in psychology from Antioch University. And I'm here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I try to make Fridays very light and fun by teaching you things that I'm learning that are like, whoa, oh my God, I didn't know that, okay? All right, so. We're gonna start while Mal is writing down his issue with his cousins. I'm gonna start out. So there is a place. You know how we, a lot of people, a lot of us, I know I do, I want some quiet time. I want to be in a quiet room. I just wanna experience some relaxation. All right, well they did an experiment, an actual experiment, and I'm gonna tell you, but this was fascinating, okay? So in Minnesota, yeah, well, you're, uh, you're, you're asking, not you, not what ask, what did you ask me? You asked me something that um, didn't sound right. Maybe that wasn't you, maybe I muted you by accident. Okay, so, uh, okay, okay, then that, I didn't mean to unmute, I didn't mean to mute you. No, you're not muted. No, uh-uh. That you're not muted, King, not you. Uh-uh, I muted somebody else. You are not muted, okay? No, you did not say anything. You can see this, it wasn't me. Yeah, it, it wasn't you. Okay, so since silence may be golden, uh, maybe it's too golden, okay? So in Minnesota, in the laboratories, there is an, it's called an anaconic chamber and with other cousins. Cause, they started to hang out with our other younger cousin with your siblings clothes. Okay, all right, so they started to hang out with the other cousins. All right, so they, because they started to hang out with the other cousins, they excluded you. But let me finish my thought and then hold on to that, okay? Okay, I'm gonna address that, hold on to that thought, and I will try to answer that today. All right, don't go away. 
All right, let me finish this. Okay, so there is what is called an anechoic chamber that is so quiet, um, the background noise is measured in negative decibels. If you can even imagine that, it's measured in negative me decibels, minus 9.4 dBA to be exact. Hi, Ms. Andrew Vaughn and Chaos Gal. Have you been in one, David? Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yes, you can now share your experience because the experience was crazy what I learned. So, and I want to know how you even ended up in one of those things in an anechoic, anechoic, anechoic chamber. The room's founder, his name is Stephen Orfield, okay? And um, he explained that not only can you hear your heart beating, but sometimes you can even hear your lungs. Oh my God. Um, the people that have actually entered in that room, and maybe David, you can validate this. Um, they cannot even, they can't hear anything. They can actually hear their, their heart. That's how quiet it is. Yeah, uh, that, isn't that crazy? Hi, Dave. So anyone, um, no one has been able to go into that room and spend more than 45 seconds in there. Now I'm curious, David, how long were you in that chamber? The voice sounds totally different. Yeah, it's measured in minus decibels. Uh, no, Annie, you're not late. Well, just a couple minutes. You're okay. Um, yeah, I want to hear your experience. So, um, but they wouldn't be there for long. The sound of the heart is annoying. I don't. I've, I've never even heard the sound of my heart. I mean, I could hear a thump, but not literally that it's so quiet that I can hear my lungs for crying out loud. Yeah, so not very long. So this is true. The quiet is so quiet that people cannot tolerate it. Yeah, it was a long time ago. How did you even end up in one of those? You hear your heart all the time? Wow, that's, that's some pretty amazing if you can hear your heart, but can you hear your lungs? Hmm. Okay, you know how when you sign something and you put an X for kisses? Kiss, kiss, remember that? Oh, yeah, if you do that, uh, how it ended up. I want to hear that long story. Okay, so that was first used to represent a kiss in 1763. So that's been around for a long time. I hear my heart screaming or sometimes my wife. <laughs> you are too funny. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, cats. We just recently came uh, into having a cat that he adopted, a snap. I know, snap, I didn't know that either. But so anytime now, hi Lumas. Anytime you're now going to put an X and send someone a little kiss, know that that's been there for a long time, 1763. That's a long time ago. In my class, out of now, where I tap about, what? Some guy in my class, out of now, where I tap, um, what should I do? What? I don't understand, what, Gus, I don't understand what you're saying. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, I don't understand the question. Am I, I'm missing something, I know. Okay. So cats, how many people out there have cats? We, I was never a cat person, ever. I'm a dog lover. I have had dogs all my life. I had one cat that was given to me when I was in my 20s. You have a cat, Sessie? Well, then you're gonna understand this one. S seven cats, Mal, oh my God, you do too? Well, apparently having cats uh, is really good for your health. It's very relaxing and it lowers your stress. And only one dog. Yeah, I've only had dogs until recently. Uh, or last year, actually last summer, this cat was living under our house and uh, he started coming around and one day I couldn't stand it anymore and I gave him some food because I felt so bad for him. It was really hot. You're all rescued and I'm bleeding. What, you're bleeding? Uh, you're bleeding? I love dogs, but the barking gives me anxiety. Oh, the barking, yeah. Well, I can see how that would be, especially if you have a barker, like I have a barker, yeah. Cal oh. Oh, Calico. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Melly has one from the scratch. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, mine has scratched a couple of times. But anyway, he was out of nowhere. He came into our lives. Then he started standing by the... Then he started coming into the porch. Then he started standing by the door, looking through the, the lights. The, I mean, the, the side lights. And all of a sudden, one day, we have a cat. And now the cat lives in the house with us. We took him to the vet. It turned out he belonged to someone else. They just abandoned him. And his actual name was Socks. Now I call him Kit Kat. Cutest little cat ever. I posted pictures on Instagram. He, yeah, oh my God, he's so cute. But let me tell you about cats. 
cats. Uh, researchers found that our finicky feline friends know just what to do in order to give us, to get food and attention from us. And boy, is my little cat a manipulator. Oh, yeah. One study published in Current Biology found that when cats used a more baby-like meow, meow, then we're going to love them all like they're my children. Yeah, they're so cute. Now I'm like a cat lover, too. They're very smart. And we learned last week that the meow of the cat, they only meow to humans. They do not meow to other cats. We learned that last week. So um, they call this the solicitation purring. If they start sounding like a baby, I know that. So they only uh, meow to humans. They're very independent. Our cat is an outdoor cat and comes in and out and in and out, comes in to eat, hangs out in every part of the house. And uh, yes, every single one has a different personality. And I decided to go out to hang out with my mom. Last minute, I decided not to go out to hang out with my mom. Kind of feel guilty. Okay, so guilty is a very misused word because guilty is sort of our way of telling us, hey, we're good people. We're really good people. That's why I feel guilty. But think about it. Guilt insinuates that you have done something wrong. You know, if you go to the store and you pick um, something off the shelf and stick it in your in your in your purse then yeah you know what you're stealing something you should feel guilty but but oh he does uh, but it, just because you don't feel like going out with somebody and you say you know what I'm not gonna go out this time doesn't mean that you need to feel guilty because what is that telling you what is the guilt about dig deep and look at the feeling what is the feeling really about because we can say no to people and say, no, I can't go this time. I don't want to, I don't really feel like doing this or whatever. It doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. So you need to really, really look at that feeling. I won't feel guilty when I steal your heart. <laughs> so yeah, guilt is an overused word. And people think that by using that word, uh, they're good people. But you know, you're a good person anyway, unless you're doing something really horrible you know, uh, and, and, and doing, committing a crime and really hurting someone purposefully, you know, uh, but if you just don't feel and don't have the energy to go out and you'd rather stay home and just chill out, that's okay. No need to feel guilty about that. Just say, you know, mom, I'll catch you next time. Let's make a plan. I just really need to stay in today. I'm just tired and I don't feel like going out. Period. That's it. You don't have to feel guilty about it. And don't even uh, give that energy because it really is wasted, right? Okay. All right. Hi, no, 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 co. All right. So, uh, anyway, your cat is really, our cat manipulates us like crazy. He'll just be walking and he'll look at you. And if you uh, look at him, he'll just drop. He'll do a drop so you can pet him. So they have a way, they meow at us, they climb on us, they use their paws. So I didn't know that cats were such manipulators, but I learned something new. All right, so if you have a cat, yeah, the drop. Oh my God, I thought that was only our cat that did that. But I guess all cats do that. Dog, dogs have owners, cats have staff. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, wait, can, can you say happy birthday to my friend? His name is uh, Nick. Okay, Nick. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's sing happy birthday to Nick. It's his birthday. And how old is Nick today? How old is Nick? So we're going to sing happy birthday to Nick because I usually do that. If it's somebody's birthday, I like to acknowledge that. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's a joke. Well, is it a joke? What, Dave, why is it a, a joke? Um, am I missing something here? Because I was in the middle of singing. It was a bad joke. Oh, boy. Okay, no, 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 no. If it's a joke, forget it. Then you don't get a birthday song. Moving on. Did you know that cats cannot taste sweetness? Did you know that? I had no idea. So you could give... Um, I didn't even see that. I didn't even notice. I just saw the name Nick. <laughs> happy birthday. Um, yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, sing to me, mine is a oh, yours is a Monday. Okay, well, well, Sessie, wait a minute. I'll sing to you on Monday on the actual day because maybe you can tune in to stab your, um, just a shame on you, on troll. Yeah, that's, you know, why do people do that? And I was very willing to sing happy birthday to Nick, but Sessie, Monday is your birthday. You know that Janet's birthday is Sunday? Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so cats cannot taste sweetness. They can, they cannot at all. So you give them something, you know, sweet, they cannot taste it. Isn't that sad? But maybe they don't have to have, um, you know, sugar. They can avoid that. Yes, uh, I'm gonna. You know what, Sussy? I'm gonna. I'm gonna do cancers. Well, they do. Like some of my best friends are cancers. So I'm gonna sing to Sussy anyway, because I was already in the mood to sing Happy Birthday because of that troll. So I'm gonna sing to Sussy just in case she's too busy. So oh, I don't let him. I don't let that spoil anything. So yeah. So Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sessie. Such a beautiful woman. Happy birthday to you and many more. You rock, Sessie. And if you're not here on Monday, then you got your birthday song today, early. But if you come back on Monday, I'll sing it again. Because I like it. I like the name. All right. I hope you enjoy your birthday, whatever you're doing. Oh, yeah. She is a very special lady. I just ran into her and her amazing son at Sprouts. Cats can <laughs> Fact. Cats cannot sing happy birthday. No, they cannot. They go, meow, 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 meow. Maybe they can do that. All right. Did you know? This is all about cats right now, but I'm changing it. Did you know that cats, you know when they purr, it is a way of self-healing. And isn't that, wouldn't that be amazing if us as humans could have that kind of ability to self-heal ourselves? So that would be pretty amazing. So the purring sound, I want a cat. Get a cat. Go adopt one. They say that cats only meow. They do. That's what I, I said last week. Oh, thank you, Sessie. Maybe they, I think they do calm themselves because you notice, yeah, when you notice when you're petting them, how they're, they're just purring and self-healing. All right. Who, I used to play with Barbies when I was a little girl, okay? Um, take from Russia. No, uh, we can't fit anybody else in this house. Uh, you do, really? Are you kidding me? What do you do to relax? So, uh, Barbie. I used to have tons of Barbies. You know, it's your wife. <laughs> I guess you have to go to another room. I was very sad and crying, and one of God's good clothes and started to purr. And then what happened? You feel better? So Barbie. Does anybody know what Barbie's real name is? Barbie's Barbie has a name. What is her real name? Does anybody know? Okay, if you don't know, I'm gonna tell you, but Barbie, Barbie was one of my favorite. I used to make all kinds of little stories. <gasps> no, you're close though, Annie. It's not Barbara Millicent Johnson. It's Barbara Millicent something else. Yeah, that's, and they're very perceptive. Animals are very perceptive. No, that's not her name. Okay, her name, and Annie was very close. Her name is, I know, so close. And I don't even know how you knew the first two. Barbie Millicent Roberts. That's her real name. Barbie Millicent Roberts. Okay. Belly buttons. We all have a belly button. It was our life source. I can't believe you even knew the middle name, Millicent. That's crazy. Was she named? Oh, it's a fan of Barbara. Oh, I don't I didn't know that. All right. So belly buttons, did you know that people actually have a fear of belly buttons? There are people, it's a phobia, and the fear's name is called, I, let me see if I can even pronounce this, omphalophobia, no, omphalophobia. Omphalophobia is the fear of belly buttons. I know. So you'd wonder, like, why does anybody have a fear of belly buttons? That was the life story. That was, that's what kept us alive in the womb. It is very important to have had a belly button. But yes, omphalophobia. I got Billy 17 now. He's not living with me, but he's still my little... Oh, 17. That's that's pretty old for a cat, right? How long do they do they live? Oompa Loompa, not Oompa Loompa. That's what they say when you drink something, right, in, in Greece. Oompa Loompa, mm, drink it. Okay, yeah. So, Oompa Loompa, Oompa the fear of belly buttons. All right. So, does anybody know? Everybody knows Cecina McDonald's, right? 17 to 20 years. Wow. Wow. That's a long time. They live longer than dogs, don't they? 
Um, the McDonald's usually has the golden arch, right? Lintophobia. You have a phobia of lint. Um, hi, Bu. So the McDonald's has a golden arch, but there is one McDonald's in one place that does not. Hi, Artuda. That does not have a golden arch. Instead, it is a turquoise arch. Does anybody know where that McDonald's is? I thought it's pretty cool. I think they should change all the golden arches to a uh, turquoise arch. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And does anybody know? Uh, oh my God, how did you know? No, no, free to laugh. It's, it's Arizona. Yes, not India, no. Wow, that's really good. I am amazed that you even, uh, how did you even know that? How did you know that? Hi, Dark Beauty. Welcome back. How did you know it was in Arizona? Are you in Arizona? I've heard that the colors red and yellow are supposed to make people hungry. Really? Doesn't McDonald's does not make me hungry, by the way. Lots of turquoise in Arizona. See, I didn't know. See, I just learned something because I guess a turquoise Arizona color. Yeah, that's just a spy. <laughs> From L.A., hi, Artudo. Welcome. Isn't it beautiful here today? Just a beautiful sunny day. All right. So that's, I, I was pretty amazed on that. All right. Did you know, <laughs> did you know that Wimbledon, the tennis balls are all stored in a perfect room temperature? All Wim, Wimbledon, 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 Wimbledon tennis balls are kept at 68 degrees Fahrenheit because the temperature of the tennis ball affects how it bounces you know, and all the tennis balls must be kept at a consistent uh, as possible for competitive reasons. I I was like blown away at that one. So they have to be kept in a very special room at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 68 degrees. There's a Wimbledon near you? Wow. So they all, it have to, the, I guess the temperature affects the bounce and all of them. You've been everywhere, haven't you, David? You've been in one of those chambers. Now you've been at Wimbledon. Where haven't you been? Okay, so that's a pretty amazing fact. Um, what's what's that in cellulose? I don't know. Hi, Charles Cuffey. Welcome. Welcome. Ooh, tennis tournament is on now. Oh, really? You like tennis? It's a nice, pretty sport, like back and forth. Uh, Natal versus Virgin Man. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Wimbledon is a place. I know that. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> How many times... Do you think that we breathe a day, right? How many times do you think that we breathe in one day? You're going to be blown away of this. I'm pretty shocked. Does anybody know? Anybody? Anybody? All the time. Yeah, but there's the certain amount of breaths that we take. I just took one right now. <laughs> I'll probably take them. Yeah. Okay, 1,500. Night flyer, you got to go higher than that. If we only took 1,500 breaths, we'd be dead by now. No, that's too high. Six million is too high. 64,000, a little bit lower, but you're, you're getting closer now. I feel like I'm almost holding my breath. You know what? Sometimes I feel like that too, like I'm doing... Ooh, David, you're so close. You are so close. Sometimes, no, that's too high still. Sometimes I, I'm doing something and I go... And I feel like I'm holding my breath. Yeah, but no. Okay, I'm going to tell you. 22,000 times we take a breath. They were very close. I shall not breathe. Not a shallow breath is not good either. No, we got to uh, fill your lungs in, let it out. Yes, yes. Fun facts are fun. I know that's why I do this. I know 22,000 breaths each day. All right. All right, who used to play with Legos when they were little kids? Yeah, take let's start let's start taking tw that's miracle. Yes, twenty two thousand. <sighs> Took an extra one there. All right, so Legos. How many people used to play with Legos? I know I had a little little Lego set. Did you know that Lego, the company, has an underground? Me too. Has an underground vault, and it has a set of every Legos. Uh, thing ever made it has it all underneath in this vault every Lego set ever made is inside that vault 
Can you imagine how many sets are in there? That's got to be pretty. I don't know if they're built or if they're in boxes. I don't know, but it's all in there. That's pretty amazing. So that's, uh, yes, I do remember Lincoln Logs. I used to have Lincoln Logs. Absolutely, yes. Is it, why is it creepy? I had a little Lego. I made it out of clay. <laughs> I think it's the wrong song. Yeah, that's the wrong one. A Lego fall. <laughs> Maybe it's a fallout shelter. I know they're all protected in there. It's like, you know, don't touch my Lego. Let, let go of my Lego. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I used to fight with my sister over Legos. I think we all used to fight over something, right? Okay. Hi, edgy kid. Okay, here we go. The next one. That was pretty good. Have you guys heard the term, uh, the term blood curling scream, right? So, and that's right with Legos. Imagine, could be a dark place to keep it all like safe in there. Oh my God, your brother hit you with a fork? That's terrible. Oh my goodness. Paul, you're late. Uh, if I, thank you for inviting followers. Uh, yeah, I hate that term. Blood curling, yeah. Well, guess what? It's an actual thing. Listen to this. The blood curling, blood curling horror movies really do curl your blood. And I thought that was just, oh my God, I heard a blood curling scream. But you know what? It's real. I didn't know that. Okay, so listen to this. When you're, um, whether you're into old school, outrageously freaky films or newer spy tingling stories, you're surely aware of the fact that scary plots can make you plots. But according to a study, oh, thank you for the super heart, Ceci. According to a study conducted by researchers in the Netherlands, blood curling horror movies can do just that. They can curdle your blood. Okay, so the scientists found that when we watch a terrifying tale, our bodies experience an increase in blood. That's when often used like an Edgar. Oh, really? Well, our bodies, when we're watching those types of movie, actually, oh my God, I, I do that all the time. Really? Yeah, so it increases a blood co coagulant, coagulant, well, that's a tough one, coagulant factor eight, which is a, a clotting protein. What, am I going to die? I don't know. Oh, you are going to die one day. Too much of the protein in our blood will clot or in essence, curdle. Yes, coagulant. Excellent, David. Coagulant. I have to have it broken down for me like a little kid. Coagulant, yeah. Um, the flying monkeys, I think they scared a lot of people. Yeah, so be careful, Dave, if you love horror movies because they create that coagulant in your blood and the blood actually does curdle. It really does. I, I'm not watching those movies. No way. Kelly, hi. Uh, no way am I watching Annabelle or It or any of those creepy movies. Can you handle watching horror? I, me either. It, yes, I can't, want, I can't handle any scary movies. No way. But if you're watching them, your blood is really curdling. It's, it's creating that coagulant. It's so tense. Me too. Only watch horror movies in a room at 68 degrees. Like the tennis balls? <laughs> Yeah, I don't like dark beauty. I don't like horror movies either. Oh my God, yeah. Your brain thinks that under attack, so cloth stuff. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, okay. No movie, no. No movies with possessed dolls or little children that are singing in the hallway or twins. No movies like that. No way. Uh-uh. May girls snuggle up too. <laughs> yeah, Danny, I'm sure you would. That's unhealthy blood, only supposed to coagulate after we die. Well, not, it does when you're watching those movies. They're badly put together. Those hatch, you know, they're called like slasher films. Your wedding video scares you. Oh my God, why? Why does it scare you? Why does your wedding video scares you? Oh my God, okay. All right. Did you know, how many people have lived in New York? I think you have, Ceci, right? I think Ceci has lived in New York, or you are from New York. That real Annabelle doll is actually Raggedy Ann doll. No. Okay, did you know that it would take it would take 22.7 years to eat at every single restaurant in New York City? 22.7 years. And try mini Oh, you tried meeting Jimmy Fallon and what happened? So, that's that's a lot of restaurants. 
You're okay. So Dave, how many uh, from um, how many restaurants have you eaten in in New York City? Because if you're gonna try every single restaurant, it would take you better start now because it's gonna take you 22.7 years and make you fat too. Oh, I know. To, to Kuwait as well as they have a lot. Yo, really? Yeah. Well, if you're gonna try every restaurant, I had a raggedy end doll. I thought she was sick as a kid, and there's this cup. <laughs> God. Oh my God, that's kind of cute though. You're trying to help her. So I was five and moved here. Okay, do you like New York, living in New York better or do you like LA better, Sassy? Down her chin, oh, but you know, what a sweet memory though. That that's what you try to do to help her. How did you know, Danny? Are you psychic? <laughs> I used to be a big fan of lighthouses, yeah. 4,400 restaurants in San Francisco. That's a lot. That's a lot of restaurants. Do, 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 do. Yeah, look at there's lighthouse. I have lighthouses everywhere. Well, this is the same my little sanctuary, and I have a lot of lighthouses here. Okay, all right. So air pollution. You know, I'm in LA, and there used to be a lot worse air pollution, uh, but now China probably has the worst air pollution in the world. You're New York for single fast base. LA. Yeah, uh, I'm funny. Okay, thank you. Now I'm craving papaya. <laughs> Papayas are good. All right, you too, um, sweet nothings. Uh, oh yeah, it's really pretty in here. I love it. It's very, very comforting. Love the weather. I had New York winter. Oh yeah, uh, posted a lighthouse to my. I just posted a lighthouse video to my. Okay, you guys, my new YouTube video is up today. All right, so uh, cleanest air in the world. Very good. So if you guys haven't checked out my YouTube, my YouTube channel, check it out. My new uh, update uploaded, Maine. I love, I've been to Maine. Absolutely beautiful. My new YouTube is, um, your book, she reads it every day. I know, I know. I thanked her for that too. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's, uh, I'm going to type it here. You guys can check it out. I don't have the link, but you can go here. All right. Um, and check it out. Therapy Express. And just type my name. All right, just type my name and I'll come up. I'll love it if you guys give me your support. There it is, just go to Therapy Express. Um, okay, so check it out, you guys. Anyway, uh, today um, my video is on uh, difficult people. Ident yes, identi identi identifying difficult people. Um, and hi, John. Next week, thank you, Dave. Next week, um, I'm going to do part two. What can you do with these difficult people, right? Because they're, they're, we probably all know one, right? Yes, I am. You were hoping and your wish came true. Here I am. All right. Air pollution, back to that. You know that air pollution kills more people than smoking. And China, uh, thanks for the super hearts, China is one of the worst places for air pollution. And I had a friend of mine send them to Oscar the Grouch. I had a friend of mine whose son went to study and get a PhD in China. And guess what? He had to wear a mask. They actually had to buy him a real good mask so he wouldn't breathe in the air. It's all that coal. So I don't know. I think it's gotten better here. But so air pollution kills more than smoking. So imagine if you are a smoker and you are doing breathing the air too. That's a double, wh a double whammy right there. What's the number one cause of death in the world? No. What What is the, the number one cause of death in the world? Is it pollution? Yeah, pollution is so bad in China. You actually have to wear a mask and people can't even go out and play. Kids can't even go to the park and play. Okay? All right. So, did you know, did you get, how many people like chips? I don't eat chips unless they're vegan. But if you like a bag of chips, you know how when you get the bag of chips, it, it feels like there's a lot of air in the bag. You know that? Everybody says, oh my God, there's so much air in here. There's like three chips and there's so much air. But guess what? All right. So all that excess air is not air. Number one cause of death is iatrogen. What's iatrogen? Wait, iatrogenic death? What is that? Iatronic, iatrogen. I can't even say the word nitrogen. David, you are like so smart. You're like a genius. You know all the answers. Love, well, I like the vegan chips. They have like cauliflower chips that are so good. Oh my God, I could eat an entire bag. But listen, 
they lie about the amount and claim it's three servings. I know. It's probably like one serving for one person. I feel like, oh, my bad that I ate a whole bag and I only ate three chips. But they're, they're pumped full of nitrogen. It's gas to keep the chips fresh and not to explode. Yeah. Dr. Smirnoff errors, they made the worst so people don't get the alarm. I believe that. That is number one cause of death is doctor's medical errors. I believe that. You go to the hospital and you might end up dying. Yes. Have you? Oh my God, they're so good, Ceci, aren't they? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so all that excess air in the chip bags isn't there to do buyers mm -hmm, into thinking there are more chips inside. In fact, it serves a purpose. Subscribe to your YouTube channel and channel. You're a better than no. Don't tell me that. Okay, I'm going to deal with you. You're not a bad person. You might just be a little annoying. <laughs> Um, it serves a purpose though and no it doesn't contain oxygen David was right instead the chip bags are filled with nitrogen um, oxygen will quickly turn the chips rancid so if there was air in there uh, this is so high it's like a thousand people dying daily no John no oh my god that's crazy from doctors mistakes what what do you think is, is happening no other industry would tolerate that. No, so why do you think that happens? I mean, are the doctors being careless or, or what's happening? That's that's terrible. Okay, so the, the chips, if they were filled with air, would go rancid. So they can't do that. So nitrogen preserves the freshness of the chips. It's called practice, yeah. It also includes wrong prescriptions, wow. Well, you know what? They gave my dad the wrong prescription for um, he was having some sort of a uh, infection or something they gave him the wrong prescription and he ended up in dialysis he has to go to dialysis three times a week because it ruined his kidneys yeah apparently I don't know yeah so that's what happened to my dad so we've had an experience with that and when I was 22 years old I was having stomach problems and they gave me um, sulfate a sulfadine this medicine He's on dialysis three days a week, but they gave me this medicine and they didn't even give me any warning about it. They just said, here, take this. It almost killed me. I was in the hospital for seven days. It turns out I was allergic to the medicine. They didn't give me a warning. I almost died from taking that medicine. So yeah, I can see how that's true. I know, but thank God they said that I was so, because I was so young and strong that I, I survived. I'm here now, Dave, don't worry. I made it. I'm healthy. I made it. All right. So, um, here we go. Okay. So I know, but I'm okay now. I'm all right now. I'm just telling you, I'm agreeing with John that the problems caused by hospitals are very severe and, um, you know, it, it's, it could happen that you could get, end up dying because either they don't diagnose you properly. They give you the wrong medication. They caught up, they cut off the wrong limb or the wrong breast. They, I heard this one time, this woman went in for breast surgery because she had cancer. They cut off the wrong breast and then had to cut the other one off. He said they camouflage the term medical error. Just call it what it is. Yeah, call it what it is exactly. Yeah. All right. So they, they time, yeah, I know. So, okay. So Mel, um, oh, I have a couple of minutes. Mel wanted to know, I think it was you that wanted to know why your cousins are there hanging out with other people. Listen. If, um, hi Romeo, if your cousins want to hang out with other people, people can actually spend time with whoever they want. And everybody have a great weekend. Bye Dave, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you visiting and all your input and everything else. You have a great weekend yourself. So just to finish off, if somebody does not want to spend time with you, don't chase the people who don't want to be in your life. If they don't want to be with you, if nothing happened, like a big argument or something that caused a rift, then, you know, you can call them and see, uh, hey, what are you guys doing this weekend? You know, and if they say, you know, oh, no, well, I'm hanging out with the cousins. Oh, okay, well, have fun. Uh, but don't chase someone who doesn't want to be caught, is what I always say. And just find your own friends and your own people that you want to hang out with. You can't force people to want to be with you. Um, hi, Right Till Death and Halcino. The more you force something, the worse it is. And the more, hi Charles, the more you try to push yourself into somebody, you're gonna come off as, as needy 
and and then people are gonna shy away from that right it's like the whole boy girl syndrome boy wants girl girl doesn't want boy then then boy stops wanting girl then girl wants boy right you're literally the one left out if you're left out then find your own friends and just go I don't know what the reason is that they're leaving you out you can try asking hey hey Bill what's going on with you guys and the cousins you know um, I'd love to hang out sometime and if they still ignore you and don't want to hang out with you who knows I, or you can you can actually approach them and say listen I noticed that um, I'm not being included is there a reason for that you can actually ask them that how do you gain your wife's love back now why do you think you lost your your wife's love okay um, it's a sad reality there's, yeah, oops, there's so much to do yeah look if somebody's excluding you and they're a part of your family you can go to the maybe the leader of the pack because you're always kind of one who's like the main person and you say you know hey hey Tom I noticed that I'm not being included in your events I really like that is there a reason for that um, and if not hey count me in next time something very non-aggressive and if they still do not include you or they may say well we try to include you but you never answer your phone you never return our text you never this um, you know I was watching an episode last night of Grey's Anatomy and the person will make time for you if they really care exactly uh, anyway I was watching an episode of Grey's Anatomy and the one lady got really upset uh, because uh, her boyfriend wasn't talking to her and she says why aren't you talking to me and he said because you never listen you always run away she didn't even realize it but every time that he would try to tell her something that was important to him she couldn't handle it and she would leave she didn't even realize that so and stop cheating wait I'm sorry I, I missed that right till death did you say that uh, why did your love your wife stop loving you why did she stop loving you and how do you know that she did let's get some more details here okay so um, anyway I think we're done with the did you knows for today but I'm gonna have a slew next week oh thank you Robin yeah so thank you and thank you for all the people who've subscribed to my YouTube channel thank you so much I really appreciate it I'm gonna come up with new content every single week next week is gonna be part two how to heal with, uh, deal with the difficult people and then I'm also gonna have uh, YouTube on Tuesdays that's gonna call the to-do list Tuesday and I'm gonna offer three things for you to do every Tuesday that are, are gonna be super simple to do and something for you to think about so to-do list Tuesdays that's coming up starting next week tostones I love the tostones yes um, hi caballero there's a scary did you know about government experiments oh, I don't know if I want to know that one yeah so sweet nothing's just uh, type therapy express and type my name and I'll come right up okay and I come up and turn on your notifications so you know when I'm on I usually upload a new video every single Friday and then starting next Tuesday I'm gonna do the to-do list Tuesday videos and they're only gonna be a minute long but I'm gonna give you three ideas for you to do on Tuesdays okay so that's coming next Tuesday and that's gonna be a quick little you know here's what you can do three little short things for Tuesdays and Friday is the normal uh, normal length video okay all right so Tuesdays are the appetizers and Fridays are the main entree like the visual change of topic oh yeah I know I like that too Josh is doing a great job by the way Josh is my son my youngest son and he is working very hard and figuring this whole YouTube it was very difficult for him he's never done anything like this before so we're working together Akuna Matata Ceci have a wonderful birthday whatever you're doing go get some Tosonis yeah he's learning Robin I trusted my gut feeling about this person I was right she was trying to always always Annie trust your gut instinct always do I have used Google Maps so it's your Montag oh okay Montag okay it's good to know just for knowledge we knowledge. yeah okay okay got it okay I'm going to the palms later okay you have a wonderful weekend all right you guys I'm done here today thank you for everything always listen always listen Annie and you know it's you feel it you feel it Cuban restaurant yes a palms is a great one that mother is thinking yeah we're working together Tio when you get in here have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet have you 
If you haven't, please do. And be, give me some support. Give me some love. I'm going to be doing a video for you every single, yes, every single week. Okay, check this one out. It's uploaded. And look next Tuesday for uh, To Do List Tuesdays, okay? All right. Okay, you guys, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll be back on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.